Alright, I know that the design of the aerial rebuild is divisive, but you can't deny that it can consistently perform very well in a vineyard for all the grapes that it can stomp, right? What is going on guys, MJ2005 Gundam here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the high-grade Gundam aerial rebuild from Gundam, the Witch from Mercury. After being damaged in the grassly duel beyond the Earth House's capability to repair, it was shipped to Plant Quetta for a complete overhaul from Shinsei, resulting in new armor and equipment to enhance the aerial's performance. This kit contains 7 runners and a medium-sized sticker sheet, and while it is developed from the aerial in canon, all of the parts are newly molded. Despite that, the build feels very similar to that of the original high-grade aerial, except that the dark blue is awfully susceptible to nut marks, and applying the clear forehead piece is a bit challenging because of the extra antennas. Apart from those little hiccups, the aerial rebuild retains the simple and relaxing assembly process, with a slightly longer build time owing it to having more design elements. And just like all others in the series, this kit has the universal head, arms and backpack, and cross-compatible legs. Straight assembly complete, and let's get my subjective thoughts out of the way. I do not like the design. It looks like JNT head took something unique and made it look more like the Double O Gundam than the Aerial, while taking reference from the Tall Strike Gundam Glitter's color scheme and stripping most of its red and yellow accents, which results in a drab overall aesthetics. However, separating the design from the engineering, the kit manages to pull off the looks decently well, possessing accurate proportions and color choices and top-notch part separation, with sticker use limited to the eyes, head, chest, shoulder, and knee sensors, as well as the shell units, which use normal stickers this time around. Weirdly enough, the red eyes and head sensors are also included despite being an unused feature at this point in time, yet there is no option for the blue shell units for those who would probably like that. Maybe it's safe for a future P Bandai variant, I don't know. However, should you like to forego the stickers, what's missing isn't all that jarring. The green sensor parts have molded detail or deep divots you can easily paint over, while the separate eye parts and in mold parts negate the need for stickers further. But the smoke pieces being way too transparent to go without stickers are also an issue here. Speaking of the end mold parts, they shine just as well as those on the original Ariel and the Lefrith under light. In comparison with the stickers though, they still look a little bit too bright to be 100% consistent, but it's not as big of a difference compared to the standard Ariel. Might as well apply the stickers on the chest anyways, since they extend past the top edge of the shell unit. As much as this kit manages to achieve because of how dull the color scheme is, I highly suggest panel lining the kit and filling in all the recesses to get the most out of the washed out surface detail, as well as cleaning up the seam line on the knees, the entire leg, as well as the bottom backpack boosters. Subjective thoughts aside, the aesthetics of the high grade aerial rebuild should mostly satisfy. For articulation, the head is on an unrestricted L-shaped double ball jointed neck. The shoulder sockets can swivel out, while the ball jointed shoulders are flexible yet sturdy to move. The shoulder armor can move up for the arm to call the teacher, there's a bicep swivel, single jointed elbows, and ball jointed wrists. There's a ball joint in the torso allowing for flexible crunches, while the waist can rotate all the way. Front and side skirts can move, the legs can perform full front splits, as well as go past the full side splits. There is a restricted thigh swivel, double jointed knees, clipped ankles, ball jointed ankle armor, and toes, as well as a pegged heel. Finally, the wings can flap along all axes, the little winglets can flip out with a tab, and the bottom boosters are on a swivel. The articulation of the aerial rebuild is more or less identical to the original aerial, despite the use of new frame parts. But the flexible flight unit components, as well as the structure remaining sturdy after a few poses, definitely helps in the experience. In terms of accessories, the aerial rebuild regressed back to just including holding hands. I guess it's worth hunting for the Mirasol flight pack and some red paint right about now. The loadout is more or less identical to the original aerial, starting with the beam sabers, usable with the included blue SB9 beams. On top of that, the escutcheon might have its looks changed, with stickers for the blue and white trim, and the scope for the middle piece. 
but it functions exactly the same as the original while looking duller in comparison. Except that it plugs on with a flat peg which unfortunately renders it non-adjustable. And just like before, the individual pieces of the shield can separate from the brace into the 11 bit staves for all range attacks and defense. And with the G which display base out in the market now, it is easier to display them doing so. Except for the fact that you need 4 sets to casually display all of them in action since there's only one of the flat pick adapters per set with 4 of the bits utilizing it. They can also be stored on the shoulders, forearms, hips, back skirts, and backpack to create the bit on form of the aerial rebuild to recharge them and further improve the mobile suit's mobility. Finally, there's the new beam rifle, which features stickers for the scopes and sensors, as well as the energy bits inside the barrel. It simply sandwiches into the hands for use as a standard beam rifle, but unlike the original, it doesn't have a beam blade mechanic. That is traded in for the two-handed mode, achieved by extending the stock, flipping down the guard, and swapping out the side handles and barrel for their extended variants for precise long-range attacks, the barrel possessing identical sensors and energy stickers. More notably, it can combine into the big feckin' gun bit rifle by combining it with the bit staves after discarding the original scope, akin to the Buster Rail Cannon of the Nextreme Gundam Xanadu. Evidently, it is a bit too heavy for the kit to maintain it at certain angles even with the solid shoulders, but the extended guard piece can rest against the crotch for extra support, which is pretty handy for asserting your dominance with your firepower. If you decide that you're done with the rifle, you can simply plug it into the gap in the middle of the backpack for solid storage. Even though the kit has worn me up to the design a little bit, I'm still not fond of the aerial rebuild design. The kit, however, is one that I would strongly recommend. Removing my opinions about the actual design, the high-grade aerial rebuild manages to impress on all fronts, while providing easy means for approaching the build, be it with paint or stickers, while its fierce looks complements the imposing weapons. And yes, while two-thirds of the loadout are what you've already seen before with the original, not to mention the need to get four display bases to casually have enough adapters for all the bits to be sent out, the signature rifle is very well made, to the point that it negates all of those issues and makes up for what the kit may have lacked in unique gimmicks. Not to mention that the kit itself is sturdy enough to handle being given such a big gun. Subjective liking about the design is whatever after experiencing the kit, and I can confidently say that the high-grade Gundam Aerial Rebuild serves as an enjoyable side grade to the original counterpart. And that's all for me. Thank you for watching, drop a like and comment if you did enjoy the video, subscribe for more content like this, and feel free to follow me on social media with the links down below. That said, take it easy, stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out guys, Bye bye